I've had my fifth generation Camaro 2SS for about seven years now. And in that seven years, I have done a copious amount of modifications to my Camaro that has left me overall very pleased and content with how my build has turned out. However, in that seven years and copious amount of modifications that I've done to the car, I've done some mods that I'm not necessarily too proud of. In this video, I'm gonna share with you guys some of the modifications that I regret doing on my fifth generation Camaro SS. And then I'm gonna tell you guys a little bit about what is the route that I would have taken if I could start all over again. Before I share these reasons and mods, I just wanna let you guys know that this is specific to my ownership experience, and this is gonna be very different from the experiences of somebody else. Just an FYI before I get a lot of keyboard warriors. All right, so for our first regret on our list, it's going to be found underneath the hood of this beautiful 2010 Camaro SS. And this is a mod that's fairly common, and that is going to be the Verum cold air intake. Now, before I get into why I regret buying this Verum cold air intake, let's talk very briefly why I bought it in the first place, and really because it looks very nice. I think this is one of the only intakes that makes the engine bay look very flush, very organized, very symmetrical. The Verum cold air intake really starts to shine, and there's a big, big difference in terms of performance as you're climbing the RPMs and climbing the speeds. The more cold air that's rushing in, the more cold air this is going to allow to supply to the engine. In contrasting to the traditional cold air intakes that draw cold air or supply cold air to the engine from the section over here, which is in theory, the coldest part of the engine. There are some other technicalities that I'm grossly oversimplifying. If the Verum cold air intake, in theory, provides the coldest air possible under the circumstances that cold air is needed the most, why do I feel like I regret it so much? To put it very simply, it really hasn't made that much of a performance difference in terms of a traditional cold air intake like a K&N, for example. In fact, I almost feel like my Spectre cold air intake, a $150 cold air intake from AutoZone, gave me the same amount of performance output as the Verum cold air intake. Now, granted, maybe I wasn't paying as much attention to that particular case, but I haven't seen any real studies on Camaro 5 that really justifies the Verum cold air intake as the actual best cold air intake for the money. Now, when it comes to performance increases, the Verum cold air intake is advertised to give you about 25 to 30 more horsepower in gains, which seems to be the industry standard with like other competitors like Rotofab or KNN. You're not really seeing too much of a difference compared to the competition. And Verum actually has two different types of intakes for you to choose from. You have the no tune version, which is essentially the no tune. So you don't actually have to get a tune when you install it, which is actually what this one has. And that is only being applied for cars that are gonna be making less than 450 wheel horsepower. Now, if you wanna make more than 450, you're gonna get the tune version, which is again, designed for cars that are gonna be making a lot more. So you'll actually have to tune it when you install it. Now, I haven't researched how strict they are between their two different models. So for example, if you make more than 450 HP with the no tune version, can you like tune it so it compares and it won't throw off the system? It's kind of weird how you have to do that where the competitors just have one model and one model only and it's applicable for any amount of wheel horsepower. The installation process for the Verum cold air intake as opposed to a traditional cold air intake is a pain in the ass. Even to this day, I haven't been able to install it properly with the instructions given because it's just not easy to do. And because of the way this is designed, it makes it really difficult for you to upgrade your radiator. The OEM one is made of plastic, so a lot of components like the overflow hose over here could snap off, which could cause coolant leaks. I actually had to do a little modification so the overflow hose would not get pinched and eventually snap. But overall, it's not a friendly mod to do for the hoses that are underneath that are, again, involved with keeping the engine cool. Alas, the Verum cold air intake just has brought me more headaches than it has benefits. And for that, you're gonna be taking spot number one. The next modification on the list of things that I regret doing to my fifth generation Camaro SS is actually a modification that I never really thought I would regret doing. But here we are one year later, and that is And that is none other than my straight piped exhaust setup. And I think it's even crazier 
because I have long tube headers and those long tube headers go through high flow cats, which is basically, you know, the most useless form of catalytic converters. Then it goes to a Flowmaster X pipe and then it pretty much ends up leaving with, again, no muffler. So it's completely 100% straight pipe with the exception of, of course, the catalytic converters. The moment that you straight pipe your car, which is absolutely the most illegal thing you can do to your exhaust system, you not only make yourself a prime target for law enforcement, but you also do it for bystanders and people that are just uh, minding their own business, whether they're car enthusiasts or you know just regular NPC people or Karens. You will be targeting everybody with a straight pipe exhaust system. And I already knew that when I first got it. In fact, I was somebody that really didn't care about that when I first did the exhaust setup. But then I realized, yeah, it's a little too much. This is what I mean when I say that this is a toxic relationship because I absolutely love doing this. It's, it's a good 
good crazy, but you know, but crazy is still crazy. You get what I'm saying about crazy? And if you guys really want to talk about toxic traits and things that are bad for you, the straight pipe exhaust setup is literally the actual worst thing that you could do for the environment and for your health. I mean, this is straight up carbon monoxide exiting with zero restrictions. I mentioned that this has a high flow catalytic converter, but oh my gosh, does it not do anything. The thing about having a straight piped V8, especially with long tube headers like that, you are indirectly representing the car community. And that's something that I started to realize. Now I consider myself relatively tamed, I do you know go a little bit wild on certain occasions especially on the highway not many other people think like that and not many people are mature enough to have a setup like this and keep it within reason now don't get me wrong i'm not perfect i have plenty of videos that you guys can see that i rip it at pretty much all hours of the day and night these are things that i'm slowly starting to understand and become more aware of and although this is quite possibly the most exciting exhaust setup that I will ever have on this car. It's also the one that I really need to change because it has brought me and it's going to bring me problems in the future and I can already tell. Say you don't give a fuck about anybody else's opinion, you don't really give a crap about being a good citizen or, or making too much noise for people out on the street or even law enforcement for that matter. Think about your comfort guys because this is a mass-produced American V8 that does not handle a straight pipe setup the way you think it does. And it will be an uncomfortable ride later on in life. So I strongly suggest you think about that. And really for that primary reason is why I put my straight pipe exhaust setup on number two. So yeah, the straight pipe exhaust setup was something that you guys probably thought I would never put on a list like this. And I think the next thing that I'm gonna mention that I regret doing to my 5th gen Camaro SS is also something that you guys are not gonna expect. And that is going to be the tints that I have up front for these beautiful RS lights. Now, you see, just like the straight pipe exhaust setup, I was never thinking that I was going to regret installing this. In fact, I was so excited to install these 35% tints on my headlights because tinting your headlights makes the car look so much more aggressive, more mysterious, and it looks really nice as an addition to the black contrasting that I have with this aqua blue metallic. When I start to drive this car at night, that is where I start to realize that this probably wasn't the best idea, or maybe I should have gotten a lighter tint. Uh, this is again 35% tint, which is not the most extreme, but it's definitely not the lightest one. So it gives it a really nice dark finish. The reduction in visibility is quite noticeable. Now, luckily my vision is okay. It's definitely not like 100% 20-20 vision. Uh, and definitely over the years and as I get older, that'll probably start to fade away. The fact that I can tell the difference between other cars that have a similar type of bulb or HID lights versus my Camaro, it definitely says something about those tints. But see, the real reason why I regret buying these lights is not so much for the visibility because again, I'm young, I have very good visibility and it really hasn't affected me as much as somebody else would. But the real reason why is because this film prevents me from treating the light underneath. That, you know, some water does secrete there and, you know, this job that I did wasn't 100% perfect. So there is a notable difference between this light and that light in terms of like haziness or fog. And because of these tints, I'd have to basically remove them treat the light, make sure that I polish it nice and neat using, you know, 3M uh, headlight restoration kits or something like that. And then afterwards applying a new film, which is in itself is kind of like an annoying process to do. It's not hard, but it's just annoying. And, you know, with these tints, I can't really treat that. Now, as a bonus piece of information that I would like to share with you guys, prior to me explaining what I would have done differently, I want to just talk about things that are kind of like little ticks or icks that I have with my build, but aren't necessarily things that I regret. Now, when I say ticks or icks, these are not necessarily things that, again, turn me off. They're kind of just things that bother me as a result of the modifications that I'm going to list in just a moment here. So these are kind of just more like, a, oh, by the way, if you do this, this is what might happen, which is annoying as fuck. 
So the first thing to talk about, and I think it's also the most important thing to talk about, is lowering my car. This is about three quarters of an inch of a drop, and my Camaro's on Megan Racing coilovers, which really enhanced every aspect of driving in the city, driving in a more performance scenario, and of course, just giving this car so much more of a cleaner and more aggressive and sporty look. The thing with lowering this car is that it has made me so damn self-conscious and it has made me worry so much when it comes to the exterior modifications that I've done. For example, this ZL1 style side skirt and the Z28 style lip that I have here in the front, which you know, I don't really have to get in close. You can already tell this thing is decimated yet again. But the Z28 style splitter is designed in such a way where it makes screwing it up so much easier. Now, these are rough dimensions here, but the length is about six inches with the height being about an inch and a quarter. And the width is maybe about two inches and a half, three inches. But I won't count it as a regret. The next and last ick that I have is gonna be found in the interior and that is going to be the suede and Alcantara theme that I have in my interior. As you guys can see here, I have the 2014-15 Recaro seats, and they are comprised of, of course, leather components and of suede and Alcantara. But as you guys can see, there's a couple of stains, and it just makes it a little bit more difficult to treat it. But again, I don't regret buying these seats in the slightest. This part over here, I don't even want to consider this like a regret because I don't think it really should make it to the list. This is kind of like these dumb experiments that you do. And of course, the last component here is my Alcantara shifter and the boot that is honestly again it looks so nice it looks very oem plus looks very sporty as well but again it is suede so there is a little bit of an upkeep that i have to do or perform on it but again these are things that i kind of already knew when i was purchasing these seats or these alcantara and suede components and although they have kind of like that annoying upkeep situation going on i absolutely love combining leather and suede and Alcantara, which makes it so worth it to have these things. And honestly, even though they're annoying, I don't regret them in the slightest. Okay, so we covered the three things that I regret doing to my fifth generation Camaro SS, and I also covered some other aches and downsides to the other modifications that I have done to the car. Now let's talk about what I would have done differently and what was the path that I would have taken if I could start all over again seven and a half or seven years ago. To be very frank, I think I spent a lot of time and a lot of resources on making the car look the part. It's pretty much heavily inspired by the fifth generation Camaro Z28, which is my dream Camaro. Essentially, I wanted this build to really emulate that OEM Plus style, which seems to be very popular nowadays. And I think I did a fabulous job with making this car look OEM Plus. The black and blue color combination matching with the yellow accents that I've added to the exterior and the interior and also in the engine bay honestly it looks incredible and I think it's such a great color scheme and color combination that really has made my car stick out amongst the rest if I were to start again seven years ago what I would have done is focus significantly less on the car's exterior look and focus more on the performance side of this the performance experience of the fifth generation Camaro SS I feel like I could have done a lot more than to focus on the exterior look of the car. So the first thing that I would have done, or the first set of modifications that I would have done, is to have done full bolt-ons and then E85. So essentially I would have done a cold air intake that would not be Verum. Then I would have done an intake manifold and of course long tube headers, which this car does have. And then I would have gotten a actual legitimate exhaust system that runs all the way to the back here. It would have aftermarket mufflers but those mufflers obviously are a lot less restrictive than the factory ones and i would have kept the quad tip exhaust setups because i absolutely love how the quad tips look on these fifth generation camaros or any muscle cars it's very sportive very muscular very aggressive and overall i would have focused more on the full bolt-on route and i probably would have done that all at the same time and i would have had a pretty awesome first couple months or maybe even first year with the car then and only then would i do the first modification to the car's exterior which has a performance enhancement as well which would be to upgrade my wheels and my tires now 
The Z28 style wheels, that is quite possibly one of the most common type of wheels that you could get for fifth generation Camaros, especially the imitation ones. So I more than likely would have had the same exact setup, a box 20 by 10 wheels with of course 305 tires in the rear and 285s in the front. You can even do 295s on 20 by 10, but I would have probably kept this exact setup that I have here. And that would definitely be able to help me put down that newly acquired horsepower that I just gained from the full boltons and E85. Now the last set of modifications that I would have done to my fifth generation Camaro SS is something that I've actually partially done but not completely and that would have been to focus on this car's handling and suspension capabilities. The Camaro SS, the fifth generation Camaro SS is a muscle car and by definition these cars are designed to go straight. However, this fifth generation Camaro SS comes with independent rear suspension, which makes it a lot better and a lot more effective when it comes to cornering and track situations. This car, again, from factory is kind of like built for cornering. Now, is it perfect? Definitely not. There is a ton of body roll with these fifth generation Camaros and even muscle cars as a whole. So the first thing that I would have probably done is to upgrade the sway bars or install sway bars to reduce that body roll. Then I would have done a set of coilovers, which I actually do have on this car and it immediately transformed the driving experience, but not only to lower the car because this has an enormous amount of wheel gap from the factory. I mean, it's quite horrendous, but this car also handles incredibly when you add those coilovers. That combination of suspension modifications is going to drastically change how this car drives in almost every aspect, whether you're driving comfortably or driving on the track. But with the combination of the wheels and the tires and the massive horsepower difference, well, massive, you'll probably get anywhere between 50 to 60 horsepower, depending on how tuned you are and how aggressive you are, especially with that E85, which is almost like a whole new car in a way. Well guys, there you have it. Those are the three modifications that I regret doing to my fifth generation Camaro SS alongside with a bonus icks and downsides to some of the modifications that I have already done to my car, but I don't necessarily regret. And of course, a list of modifications of things that I would have done differently if I could start all over again. But overall guys, I am so in love with my fifth generation Camaro SS. And yes, even though it is not at the optimal performance levels that I would have liked for it to be at, I still look back at it every single day and always say to myself, man, I am so proud of how this build came out. This car has also been widely loved and appreciated through the Camaro community and the car community as a whole here in South Florida and around the world. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this video and found it informative and somewhat entertaining. If you did, go ahead and hit the like button. It helps out tremendously with the algorithm. If you guys enjoy my content overall, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. And last but not least, don't forget to hit the notification bell so you don't miss any more of my future videos. Guys, thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you on the next one.